catch right, that's creating art to cause havoc when revolution engages conscious knowledge. Um, and so I'm basically trying to promote consciousness through my music, through the medium of hip hop. I got involved in hip hop, I mean, the first rhyme I wrote, I was about 10 or 11 years old, um, and it was some real whack corniness about how cool I was and how many girls I had that didn't really have. Um, and uh, I guess from there it just started to evolve. Um, you know, I've been a fan of hip hop most of my life. Um, when I was a kid, I listened to a lot of uh, classic rock. Got into hip hop when, uh, about the same time I started writing around, so like 9, 10, 11. And um, I, I got involved in the culture not just through rap, so I was also a b boy at a, for a time period. I was a graphic graffiti writer also. Um, and. I guess I think a lot of people need to really remember that too. It's not just about rapping or you know hip hop culture. There's four elements: MC, graffiti, b-boying, and uh, DJing. And uh, I did basically three out of the four, and just kind of found my my calling with MC because I felt like it was the most powerful way to communicate. I, I think politicians can can often be uh, self-serving and often like have the wrong interests at heart. Um, I'm strictly about the people's interests, whether it be through hip hop or just through, you know, community organizing in general. When I was in the seventh grade, I, went, I read an uh, autobiography of Malcolm X, which opened my head up to a lot of things. I think from there, I read the autobiography of Asada Shakur. Um, I read uh, like the Miseducation of the Negro. Um, when I got to ninth grade, one of the books I read that, that had a lot of influence on me was The Wretched of the Earth by Franz Fanon. Um, just uh, a lot of books that really, really heightened my consciousness. Also just um, researching different movements of back in the day, from the Panthers to the Zapatistas to the Young Lords Party. Um, and just really becoming aware of, of people who took the power back, you know, to benefit their communities. I was very inspired by that. It's, it's great that we're doing this now. Uh, you know, yourself, Bird, you know, we all grew up in the same neighborhood or whatever. And, um, you know, grew up seeing the same thing, seeing, you know, crack fiends, dope fiends, seeing, you know, police harassing brothers on the street, um, you know. I, I make reference in that song hotter to the whole X-Men thing that went down with the police. I think uh, that had an influence on a lot of cats who grew up in Eggleston who knew about that. Um, and just, you know, like I said, that in, in combination with the books I got into in the seventh grade and, um, you know, being involved in the hip hop movement heavy, I think the combination of all those things is really uh, uh, what you hear on the records and what you see in the videos. Well, like I said, I, I wrote, my first rhymes in the fifth grade, 10 or 11 years old, um, a lot of a lot of nonsense basically. And I wrote I wrote that for for a good little while before I started to become conscious myself. And when I made that transition, it wasn't difficult at all. I just as an MC, um, from that point, I, I knew that I had to be true to myself. I knew you know I had a good grasp on, on hip hop and what MC was about. And I knew I didn't want to be the dude that was perpetrating the fraud because that's what you see a lot of uh, right now. So for myself, um, really, uh, the point where I got the confidence to, to, to branch out and do this thing seriously for real was uh, in the seventh grade when I got a chance. I was, I was blessed with the opportunity to meet um, the brothers from Public Enemy who uh, really did a lot to put me put me on, a, on the right path because at the time when I met them, you know, that's when I was doing everything. I was graffiti, uh, break dancing, and I'm seeing. Um, I met them 13 years old. They were shooting a music video in Boston. Forgot to give the peeps what they need. You know, I'm down there. It's Funky Fresh Records, and you know, Chuck Griff, Flav show up. I dab Chuck up, and and they were just impressed off the fact I'm like 14 years old, 13 years old, and knew about them even because. You know, our generation, I think, missed out on a lot of the conscious hip hop that, that, that happened towards the end of the 80s and in the early 90s. And so, for myself at that age to have found out about it and seek that out, they were impressed with. Um, them being impressed with me gave me a whole hell of a lot of confidence to really uh, do my thing. Because, you know, um, rhyming in middle school, you know, I was doing the ciphers in the bathroom, battling cats, winning a lot of the battles and whatnot. But I. I you know, I didn't have the confidence to think like I could get on a record and, and, and be a, a known rapper like that. You know what I mean? But meeting Public Enemy and having Public Enemy give me props like that 
you know, changed that for me a lot because I, I, I was like, wow, if, if, if a group that I look up to is telling me that, that I, I got something good to say, then maybe I really do, you know? For MCing, you got to be true to yourself, right? So with the gangster rapper, for example, if you're a gangster rapper and you're doing all these raps about, uh, you know, selling cracks and shooting guns, and you're not really doing that. That's not a good look in hip-hop. So for Conscious Hip Hop, it was the same thing for me. And I was very inspired by um, Dead Prez in particular, uh, who are deeply connected to the Uhuru movement and Impendum, um, for being, you know, community organizers as well as emceeing and doing both uh, with the same amount of vigor. Um, so while I was in high school, I connected with some people um, and initially that started out as a, uh, like a school organization or whatever, like a school club, if you will. Um, and we, you know, we got together, formed this group, Voices of Liberation, and the the aim with that was just to promote consciousness, raise consciousness in the school through other means besides what I was already doing, like the MC and the hip hop aspect. So, uh, you know, while we were at the school, we did a, a poster campaign, which the school administration hated. Um, we almost uh, did a when the whole stop snitching controversy was out. Um, and they, they, they had told a couple kids to uh, take off their Stop Snitching t-shirts. We were trying to organize students to all come in and wear their Stop Snitching t-shirts at the same time. That never went down, but it would have been lovely if it did. Um, you know, from there, from going up against a lot of uh, resistance, at, with the administration of the school, we decided to branch out into the community, um, connected with a lot of other um, brilliant organizers who are still with us to this day. I uh, got a shout out. Dima Faisal, who, who's held us down a lot, um, you know, Augustine Herrera, Jake Lightoff, um, and Adrian, uh, you know, we got a real, real tight team of cats who, who, who's doing the damn thing. You know, with organizing, it's about, one, getting people to know what's wrong, because a lot of people in our community, unfortunately, they don't even realize that we're being systematically oppressed and that we're being basically you know, held down in modern modern day slavery, mental slavery, if you will. Um, so we gotta give people that red pill if you've seen the Matrix, you know what I mean? We gotta wake people up in that way. And then once you woke up, you gotta create something to where there's a, a mechanism for people to get involved in changing the things that's, that's wrong in the community. It's deep, bro. I mean, when you got that much on your plate and when you, um, especially now for me with the MC and things starting to pick up again a little bit, um, it's, it's always a struggle to, to, to balance out doing that aspect of things and also being a community organizer and then also, you know, being a regular person, like, you know, working a job and paying rent and, you know, still in school and stuff like that. So it's, it's always difficult and you got to have a, a ill work, work ethic. Um, you know, there was a point, um, I kind of, I've been slipping a lot lately. There was a point where I was getting up, you know, five, six in the morning, every, every morning, you know, push-ups and then to class or to work and to doing my thing and, and also too uh, with me as an artist because I manage myself that adds a whole nother layer to it um, and I'm working now uh, I just I just recruited a brother who I actually used to live with my man Jonathan or whatever to kind of help me out with that aspect of things because um, doing all that yourself is just very difficult and you have to have a real tremendous work ethic you know so definitely for the people out there Everything is possible, but you do got to put the line behind it. You got to, number one, uh, find out what's out there in the community. You got to find out what organizations is there, what's their goals, what are they doing, um, how that ties into what you see for your vision for your community. Um, if there's something there that's kind of in line with, with what you see, I would say get involved with it. And if not, um, it's really not that hard to form your own organization. I got with some people, we did it, and it was, you know what I mean? I, there was difficulties, don't get me wrong, but I mean, like, we got an organization started and we did a lot of things that we never thought we would do. Um, and so, you know, if you're in an area like, you know, because Boston, that was the thing, too, going back to the Voices of Liberation piece. We started Voices of Liberation because there wasn't a group in Boston, I felt like, that was um, dealing with the same type of politics that we were dealing with. So, um, if, if you're in a city like that where there's a lot of BS organizations or organizations that you don't feel you could affiliate yourself with, then start your own. But you do have to be organized, and when I say organized, like, in an organization, you can't just, I mean, you know, one person can make a difference, but one person makes a difference by organizing. Right back, right back, right back, right back.